Welcome to Let's Get to the Marks. Going through an A-level biology question on the index of diversity. Let's get into it. A scientist identified and counted the invertebrate species present in samples taken at two sites in a river. The scientist also measured the rate of water flow at each site. His results are shown in table two and three. We've got the name of the invertebrate species here, and then we've got site one and two. And this shows the number of each species at site one and two on the river, different places on the river, total number caught 48 and 45. Then we've got the index of diversity, which is 4.7 on site two, which is quite high. And the rate of flow of water seems to be 30 to 60 at site two. So the flow of the water is faster than one to 14 at site one. And we haven't got the index of diversity at site one, so we can all guess what we're going to be asked here. Complete table three by calculating the index of diversity at site one. We've got to use n over n minus one over the sum of lowercase n minus one, and that will give us the diversity. Okay. So what does the big N mean? Well, the big fat capital N, what does that mean? That is the total number of organisms. So, um, Big N is equal to 48 at site one and 45 at site two. I suggest you pause the video, grab some scrap paper, grab your scientific calculator, have a go at this question, and then unpause and watch me calculate it. Okay, so total number of organisms is big N. Little N is the number of organisms in an individual species. So for example, 17, 6, 0, 12, 13, those are all the individual species. So what we need to do is big N multiplied by big N minus one over the sum of all the little n's multiplied by little n minus one. Okay, so D equals 48 multiplied by 48 minus one. So essentially we're doing 48 times 47 and that equals 2,256. Now we need to do N times N minus one. So we've got to do site one, 17 times 16, which is N minus one. And then we've got to add that to six times five because we're doing six times six minus one and then uh, 12 times 11 and 13 times 12 we don't need to use the zero and if we bash that in the calculator we get 2256 over 590 we get 3.823 something along those lines you're going to round down i like to go to three significant figures the mark scheme except 3.8 or anywhere between like 3.8 and 3.4 um, or something like that so i giving 3.82 is what came out in my working out. So there you go. That's going to get you the mark. A lot of effort, actually, for one mark, those index questions. Right, 4.2. Explain why it's more useful to calculate an index of diversity than record species richness. So hopefully you know what species richness is. Species richness is the number of different individual species living in an area or habitat. An index of diversity doesn't just take into account the number of species, but it also takes into account the relative abundance of each species, something known as species evenness, the relative abundance. So you might have field A and field B. Field A might have five species, but they only have, um, they have 10 of one species and then one of four other species. And field B might only have three species, so two less species, but they have 30 of each species. So which one is more biodiverse? We can't really say field A is, it's only got one member of each species. So what we're doing there is we're taking into account not just the number of species, but the relative abundance as well. And this takes into account the fact that you may have a couple of pop really large populations or some really small populations. And that all contributes to the overall index of diversity. The higher the index of diversity gives us an idea of the area that is more biodiverse and more likely to survive drastic changes to that environment. Right, 4.3 suggests how the scientists measured the rate of flow in the river. Well, a good idea would be, here's your river with the arrow showing the flow of the river. What you should do, what does rate mean? Rate essentially is speed. And how do you calculate speed? Speed is distance over time. So you'd measure out like 10 meters of the river, put a floating marker at the start, get your timer out and time how long it takes for your marker to reach the end of that set distance. Might be 10 meters, might be 50 meters, whatever you want. So you get your stopwatch out and calculate how many seconds. And then we can do speed equals distance over time or rate in this case is distance over time. So measure the distance. Divide it by the time. There's your mark. And there we go. There's the answer, guys. 
So check out you did. Obviously, it's best to pause the video before I start waffling out the answer so you get a chance to write it down on scrap paper. 4.4, use the information in table two and three to suggest and explain a reason for the difference in the number of slate drake uh, mayfly at the two different sites. So site one, we've got zero. Look here, we've got zero. So no slate drake mayfly found. And at site two, there were six. What could be the reasons? Well, look at the index of diversity as 4.7. We know site one was 3.8. So there's a higher index of diversity how does that help the mayfly, there being a higher index of diversity? There was also a faster flow of the river. So first of all, site one has a lower biodiversity, or we could say the opposite and say site two has a higher biodiversity. So if, if it has a lower biodiversity, there's probably less prey. I wouldn't bang on about, I've written less habitats. I wouldn't bang on about that really. It doesn't tell you that. Um, it tells you that there's less prey, there's less organisms there, maybe less things to eat. Um, site one has less water flow. So the water is flowing more slowly. This means it's less oxygenated. So um, there's less oxygen in the water, which means there's less respiration. It means the organisms are less able to produce ACP. And that will get you your second mark. Lovely jubbly. So less prey, less available food sources as there's a lower index of diversity and then uh, less water flow, so less oxygen. It's important when there's sampling that it's standardized. So this is just asking you what are some control variables. So you want to take your samples from the same area and at the same time each day because certain species may come out more at different times of the day. So you've got to do it at the same time each day. Use the same size net or the same size beaker or however you're capturing these things. Um, collect the same volume of water. Yeah, maybe not. You don't need to collect the same volume of water, but um, same position along the river. Um, same depth of sample. Well, you're probably doing it off the surface to catch mayfly and stuff, so you don't really need to do it at the same depth. But if you were trying to get fish, then maybe you'd do it at the same depth. And that's the end of this uh, question. So don't forget, sharing, caring, hit the like, subscribe, punch up the bell, whatever. Let's get to the marks. You're still here? It's over.